muy, muy, muy felices todos. Bienvenido, Daniel. Can I start now? Can, can, can anyone hear me? Awesome. Can, can I start now? Is everyone ready? All right, good. All right, so my name is Daniel Matos. I'm uh, straight out of DICE in Stockholm. I've been touring the world for, I think, six months now. Uh, E3, Gamescom, press event in Madrid, Tokyo, Johannesburg, and now I'm in Medellin. I arrived yesterday. Great city, great place to be in, uh, great people as well. So what I've been doing at DICE is that, that's me back when I used to be young, when I used to look good. Uh, I've been working on Back Company 2 Vietnam, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, expansion packs for Battlefield 3 as a community manager, now Battlefield 4 as a producer. Um, it's a lot of fun. We have a really great team in the studio to work with. They're all absolutely amazing. And uh, you guys are also amazing. We're actually, actually playing our game. Thank you so much. Are you, uh, are you looking forward to Battlefield 4? Yeah. yeah, you are. Only that corner. How about you guys? Are you looking forward to Battlefield 4? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I thought. Uh, it's going to be great. So a little short story about DICE now. So these guys over here, they founded DICE back in 1992 in uh, some southern part of Sweden. And they made something called Pinball Dreams. Uh, Pinball Dreams was their first game they ever made, the first game they ever marketed, first game they ever sold. That's the foundation of DICE. So that's how DICE actually started. It wasn't with Battlefield 42, it wasn't with Kone Migo, it was with that game over there. Uh, we have in total, for Battlefield, more than 65 million players, overall titles, sold over 65 million copies. And that's a lot of fun. And you guys are part of that big, unique family, big pool of, of gamers. Let's show off a little video here about what we've been doing in the world. There we go. Don't know if we have any sound. This, this video was made before Battlefield 4, so we are actually making Battlefield 4. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we're, we're still making Battlefield 4. This video is an old video. I used it the first time last year when I was in Tel Aviv and held a presentation just like this one. Uh, how did Battlefield start in general? Like, how do we start making a game like Battlefield? Well, the producers of Battlefield 42 sat down. It was DICE and it was Refraction Games. They went together, made something called Codename Eagle. After that, they built Battlefield 42, the only game at that time that had jets and it had planes and it had submarines, boats, infantry and tanks all in one on a huge scale. Uh, great experience for us, great experience for us fans. That's a game EA published. This was before we were purchased by EA. 
that was 10, 12 years ago. Now we're with Battlefield 4. And what are we doing with Battlefield 4? Well, it's, an, it's a pretty unique title, you know. It's, it's uh, coming after Battlefield 3. How can we make things different? Look at how Battlefield 3 was awesome. Uh, high production values is one of them. Uh, always work with the latest and the greatest and also the best people in the industry. Our artists, our graphical designers, our engineers are, I would say, top-notch in this industry today. Uh, you need to have a unique and sellable style and tone. What's the unique tone for Battlefield? The unique tone for Battlefield is the open war. It's the total all-out combat we have. It's the destruction. It's the revolution. It's the commander aspect. So all of that combined makes Battlefield 4 unique and also very sellable because people like to buy it. We're also aiming to become Shooter of the Year. Um, for the past, I would say, 10 years, we've been getting a lot of awards, a lot of recognition. We won around five BAFTAs, the nicest thing you can win. Uh, we won a lot of E3 Gamescom awards, but we're, we're looking for Shooter of the Year this time around to make sure we just set our brand as the best game, FPS game to play out there. And our, our goal for this is, you know, sell 20 million copies lifetime because a studio needs to live, a studio needs to survive, especially in the financial situation everyone is in today. Uh, so what, what is Battlefield? What is Battlefield in general? Uh, Battlefield in general has a very strong multiplayer focus. It's based on single player as well. Uh, the multiplayer focus is going on a rock, paper, scissors type of layout. So anything can happen at any given moment. That is what we call Battlefield moments. Uh, the rock, paper, scissors kind of gameplay also detect, also detects some random elements happening. You never really know across the ridge, is it going to be a mine, is it going to be an RPG? How, do I, how low can I go with my jet before I'm seen on the radar? How low can I go before I get shot by anti-air vehicles? So, you know, it's a very tricky situation when you play Battlefield. You have to adapt to every battle out there because every battle is different. It's not a script, you know, there's no script to playing Battlefield. You just have to make sure that, you know, you know how to play. If you don't know how to play for Battlefield 4, we have a testing ground. That testing ground is for anyone who wants to try out vehicles, try out weapons, try some target practicing. So it's all there for you. It's very, very fun. Um, so vehicles, destruction, team play, that's a big thing. And we've added much, many, many more vehicles this time around. We have China, Russia, and US as factions this time in, uh, in Battlefield 4. Uh, new features such as Commander, Levolution, also a really good spectator mode that you can check out. The Commander mode is an RTS element that ties into the team play. So I need a capture point taken with a Tomahawk. So I send my squad way across the map. They capture the point. I get Commander points. I can drop you know, supplies. I can drop vehicles. And my squad get points because they are adding up in the squad bar. Also, one cool thing about Battlefield 4 this time around is that we have huge worlds to play in. These are the biggest maps we've ever created. We said that for Battlefield 3, and this is Battlefield 4, so obviously it's going to be better and bigger. So, huge maps to play on. Uh, we've got naval gameplay coming back, so you have boats, huge boats driving around uh, in different waves. So, the dynamic maps also add to that. Starts out with a calm sea, then it, the waves just explode in the ocean. So, you have waves everywhere, and you have to, you have to be able to maneuver your boat all across those waves because it's going to get very, very tricky to drive. Also a cool thing is that everything is player triggered. So you decide if you want to take down skyscraper and multiplayer. You decide if you want to have an aircraft carrier crash in and also you decide if you want to break a levee over flooding a whole city. Switches from tanks to boats as well. So you decide if you want to do all of that. If you don't want that, don't do it. It's fine by me, fine by everyone else. Just make sure you enjoy the game. Uh, the tech behind Battlefield 4, now we're getting into the, to the more core parts. It's Frostbite 3. Frostbite 3 is an upgraded version of Frostbite 2, uh, which allows us to create all these dynamic elements, which allows us to create all these cool worlds that you play in. Uh, Battlelog is now across all platforms, 360, PS3, PS4, Xbox One, and on PC as usual. Uh, you also have a second screen experience, so you can have your battle screen right here in your PC or in your console. And on your iPad, iPad mini or Android device, you can see the map. So you can just check the map, fix your loadout while you're playing. It's a really, really cool thing. The same goes for Commander. You have a Commander tablet. You just sit with your Commander in, in the tablet and just wreck stuff. It's really, really cool as well. So you no longer have to be in the game. PS Vita, streaming from PS4, also a cool thing. So you can play Battlefield on your Vita. Uh, the visual style this time around for single player has changed. The visual style is more in tone with Battlefield 4 multiplayer. 
the narrative is interesting because it's not just a geopolitical story, it's also an emotional story about what's going on in the world today. So these four characters that are teaming up are teaming up because something happened in the world and they need to find out what. I don't want to spoil it for you, you should buy the game and play it yourselves. Uh, but what's going on here is that it's an emotional story and a geopolitical one, so you can focus on both. Your choices matter. You can assign squads to go to different places. You can customize your loadout. So this single player is getting you more ready for Battlefield 4 than Battlefield 3 single player did. So those are lessons learned from the previous title. And this is an image we took from the single player, from a trailer that we launched close to game development conference in San Francisco. Uh, we just want to show off that everything we do, every video we release, every screenshot we release is always from in-game. So this is from the game. Uh, we don't believe in CGI stuff, we don't believe in outsourcing to different studios to make our videos. Our, our amazing video team make their own videos and they do a very good job. It's right in the game. So what you see on the video is what you see in the game. That's what you're, you're going to get in the end of the day. How do we make all this happen? Uh, the structure at DICE, how we work at DICE is very simple. We work in groups, we have senior development directors as you see there, SDD, and EP is our executive producer. And under, under those two people who carry the utmost responsibility for Battlefield, we have everyone else who, does, who creates the game. And feedback is very, very open. We get to work with daily feedback changes, um, daily feedback coming in from our studio, from our players. So we're very quick to adapting, very quick to changing anything in the Battlefield. Also, you know, as I said, working with our awesome team back at DICE. This is a studio meeting we had at DICE. That's our executive producer, Patrick Bach, and these are all the people in the studio, or most of the people. We had a team meeting. I think it was right before Gamescom when we had this. Uh, and yes, that is pretty much it for me. Uh, I need to put on my headset now because I need to understand what's going on. So there's going to be a questions, questions and answers session. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in two seconds. I'm just going to put this right in. All right, there we go. Uh, any questions? One in the front. Oh, uh, do we have an do we have an extra microphone? Okay, can you bring it out to the gentleman here in the black shirt? It's going to plug it in for a second. That little booth, that's, your, that's the translator, by the way. See that booth? It looks awesome. Just a second. So, yeah, to this gentleman right here. Eh, buenas tardes, eh, ¿han pensado en la posibilidad de montar o implementar servidores para, para Colombia, por ejemplo, para mejorar las velocidades de conexión, los PIN, tener acceso a más servidores con una mejor conexión y ser más competitivo a la hora de el competir pues como más hardcore? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for playing our game, uh, thank you so much. Uh, regarding adding servers locally to different countries, we always have to make sure that we have enough players in that country because we don't host the servers, it's different companies that host the servers. When they host the servers, uh, they make sure the connection is good, they make sure everything is running, they also make sure that they, you know, it's a business, they need money for it. So if Colombia has enough players, we'll definitely look into that, yes. Can you, can you hear what he said? Okay, that's good? All right, great. Any more? So, yes, you and the sunglasses. You should come up front and grab a microphone right here. Hello. 
Hi. Uh, thanks to Visit Colombia, I am powerful uh, from Ortonator clan, uh, the best clan in Colombia of Battlefield. Uh, I want to ask about uh, Battle Recorder. I think that uh, Spectator Mode is the best, it's awesome, but I want to know about the Spectator Mode. And the second is uh, if you want to talk more about Commander Mode. Thanks. Uh, so, Battle Recorder, first of all, is, it's not going to happen for Battlefield 4. Uh, the reason being that we put our resources somewhere else, which is making the game more awesome for 100% of the people instead of making a Battle Recorder for 2% of the people. Um, for next generation platforms, they're already making something like Battle Recorder. And they're already making a really good Battle Recorder uh, overall in their own console. So we don't really have to do that. For PC, everyone's been using third-party software for a while, so and that's that's working really, really well. And they've been using it for such a long time with Battlefield that we just feel, okay, you're on par, you're doing really, really well. So we don't really feel like we need to do anything there. Any more questions, anyone? Yes, you should come up here and grab the microphone. Eh, ¿Qué tal? Yo quisiera preguntar más bien como la industria de los videojuegos eh, ¿Qué ha pensado para mitigar la piratería en Latinoamérica? No tanto como las restricciones, sino el valor de los juegos Porque en Latinoamérica son muy costosos con relación a Europa o Estados Unidos ¿Qué han pensado para evitar la piratería desde un punto económico sobre el valor del costo de los videojuegos? Yeah, so talking about piracy, um, so what we've done so far with Battlefield 4 is that we've, um, we've implemented online, online lock, basically. It's origin and battle lock. So through those, you have to play Battlefield online. Single player, it might as well be pirated. That's how it is. That's how the world works. Um, pirates are always going to be in front of development. That's, that's what it's been. That's what it's always going to be like. We just have to make sure at DICE that we... We make sure that you know piracy stays where it is, and we just make sure we do our own thing in regards to uh, online. We haven't really noticed piracy damaging our industry. Uh, the industry is still blooming. It's generating more and more uh, money per year. Uh, it's generating more and more players per year. It's just going bigger and better. Um, so I'm thinking piracy is a bit overrated. It's a bit overhyped. Uh, but I do agree that games need to be cheaper. I do agree. Um, a lot of games are very, very expensive. Um, so yeah. Um, buenas tardes. Mi pregunta es para la parte de single player. Viene la opción de escoger un personaje femenino? Uh, no, no. You, unfortunately, you don't have the option. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are, however, we are, however, we're making a game called Mirror's Edge. Do you know about it? Do you, does anyone here know about Mirror's Edge? Yes. Mirror's Edge, you have the opportunity to play a girl, and only a girl, and she jumps on roofs. She's a courier in a post in a kind of a post dystopian world. Uh, we made Mirror's Edge one way back a few years ago. We're making a second Mirror's Edge now, so I think you will really, really like that game. It's a really cool game. Hello. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the best new feature that Battlefield 4 has, the new one? What do you think What is the best new feature? Uh, the best new feature of Battlefield 4? Uh, difficult. There are so many features. I worked on spectator mode, which is really, really cool. Um, I would say the commander mode. It's amazing. It's really, really cool. Uh, what you can do with commander mode is basically a brand new game. So it's two games in one. So you control the battlefield. You control. You tell your players where to go. You tell them where to attack. You kind of the overmind. And you're never bored. You have so much to do. You can give them squad orders. You can drop tomahawks. You can uh, put up AC 130s in, like big gunships in the sky. So you've got a lot of stuff to do as a commander. So that's my favorite feature in the game. Hi. First of all. I want to to say it was a, a wonderful speech, and I, I wonder with just a, just one thing is 
what makes what is the 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 secret of made your your video game with a lot of successful uh, I mean there are a lot of video game games in this same subject but what made you different what made you successful in this one uh, I would say what, what made us really successful with Battlefield is that we had an idea that we went through with uh, something that no one had done before uh, the whole all-out warfare experience no one had ever done that in a in a video game before so I think we were the first ones and then just iterating you know don't change too much just make it better all the time make Battlefield 2 make Battlefield 24 2 just make it better all the time listen to what people want that's the thing because at the end of the day people are gonna play your game and you have to think it's fun too so a lot of fun make it good for people make it sure that you know they really really want to play it Daniel first of all thank you for being here in Colombia thank you I have two little questions one from a friend that just gave me a call and one for me personally first of all is why we have to pay in euros while we are in Colombia and the nearest store is in Mexico. Yeah. That's kind of... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a very good question. I'm definitely the wrong person to answer that because I'm, I'm from the studio. The stu we make the game, we don't publish the game. So that's a question for your EA reps in Mexico. Uh, it could be anything regarding taxes, regarding you know, art export or something. I am not very, very sure. Uh, it's unfortunate they have to pay more though and you know that's feedback I will take back to EA when I go back okay okay and the second question it's a little more technical one first of all uh, why you decided to change in Battlefield 4 the speed of the bullet of the snipers and the uh, how to say it uh, the bullet at the end of the shot it goes down really fast yeah so and finally yeah. how the hell do I get that big rock on the map on the beta. The, the I saw on a video on the E3 a big rock going around and trashing like two tanks, one LAV. Yeah. How do I get that? Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a map called uh, Dam. That's a different map. Let's oh. talk about the first question: Why the snipers' bullets are dropping too fast? It's because you in Battlefield 3 you didn't have the option to adjust your scope sight. In Battlefield 4 you have the option to adjust it. And you can see how it's being adjusted if you press D-pad down or if you press um, if you press uh, back button on your mouse. I don't know what's configured to on your mouse. Is it's back on my mouse. So that's how you configure your bullet drop. So you decide how you want the bullet to drop. So everything is in your hands. So just use that function. It's very very good. And you, the speed. The what? What about the speed of the bullet? The speed it, it also. Looks I like mean, if you if you go one, if you go one kilometer straight, it's going to go faster. So you can adjust it up to one kilometer from 200 meters. So that's where that's where the feature lies. All right. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it was great, and I was I really wanted to know a couple of things. First would be, um, do you have any plans for the next gen consoles for for the new inputs like the? like the PS4 and the touchpad, uh, are you making use of any of that? And also wanted to know what challenges have you found uh, or obstacles when creating such a game? And what tips or suggestions could you give us? So uh, for, for next gen, we're coming out with the game, 64 players, 60 FPS on, on PS4 and Xbox, uh, Xbox One. You'll also be able to stream to PS Vita from, uh, from um, Let's go from PS4, getting tired now, jet lag too. Uh, so that's where you can stream everything from. Um, regards to your second question, what was that again? What challenges have you what found? What challenges? In? Wow, uh, <laughs> a lot of challenges. Making Battlefield 4, I mean, making a game like Battlefield 4 is not easy. I think the challenges have mostly been in the studio. Uh, everyone works together, but try to not overlap each other's work. Try to not do the work same time again so my biggest my biggest advice to anyone making games here with different people is to always sync up with these people what are you doing now what can I help you with what's it gonna look like when it's done always throw those three steps just follow them feedback is very important so catch as many as much feedback as you can because that's gonna be in the end of the day what makes or breaks your game thank you thank you
Buenos días. Pues una pregunta es, mmm, acá en Colombia hay mucho talento y la verdad le hago la invitación de paso. ¿Y usted alguna vez pensaría trabajar en Colombia o llamar a algunos desarrolladores de acá? La verdad conozco mucho talento y me gustaría que una empresa tan importante como la de ustedes se fijaran en nosotros y nos dieran la oportunidad. That's a, that's a great question. It would be great to come and work in Colombia. It's my, I've, I've, it's my only day in Colombia, so I'm not going to spend too many days here, unfortunately. I would love to be around for much longer. Uh, we've, we recently opened a studio in Los Angeles. Um, I don't know if any other studio is going to open here very, very soon. That, that I don't know. I do know that it's a great country, great people, uh, great internet infrastructure now, uh, and it's just looking better and better. So. The game developers here, just keep developing your games, keep selling your products, keep, you know, marketing your products. Make sure it, is, make sure it sticks, you know, make sure people see it on social media. Get people to play, get people to feedback on it, because that's the only way it's going to get better and better. Um, so, yeah, I hope a lot of studios come down to Colombia. It's a great place to be. Buenas tardes. Eh, ¿En algún momento han pensado en, en comercializar el, el motor gráfico que ustedes tienen o, o más bien permitir que desarrolladores lo prueben? Ok, buenas tardes. Eh, la pregunta es, ¿en algún momento han pensado comercializar el motor gráfico que ustedes utilizan o permitir la prueba por desarrolladores? O sea, soltarlo al público. Uh, we have thought of it. The answer is no. Uh, it's our secret recipe in the studio. Uh, and all across EA, EA titles are using it as well. So Dragon Age, we've got the uh, animation system for FIFA. That's what you're playing with here in Battlefield. Uh, it just looks different because you don't have 11 players on the square field on Battlefield. So, uh, But we're using the element from FIFA. We're using... EA's using Frostbite 3 in a lot of different titles. Medal of Honor, Dragon Age. Uh, using it in Army of 3, Army of 2. Devil's Cartel, that's, that was the third one. So using it in all of their cross products. And it's an EA thing now. It's, it's, uh, it's much more than DICE. And to make EA's games you know, competitive in today's market, we need to have you know, our, our preferable thing, you know, our thing that makes us unique, and that's our engine. Uh, maybe in, very, in a very, very long time we'll give it out. I'm not sure, but I'm, not right now, no. Hi, uh, how do you get 4 million uh, in followers in a little time in Facebook and Twitter? What is the secret? How I have so many followers on Facebook and Twitter? Yes. I'm being funny. No? Uh, no, I just, I don't know. They just follow me. Um, I don't know why. I don't say many cool things. I don't say very interesting things, I think. They just do. Uh, first of all, thank you for being in, here in Colombia. I have a very important question, maybe a similar to one of these guys about buying, buying uh, Battlefield 4. Yeah. I work for a company, a uh, metal pavement called Pinvali here in Colombia. We are wondering why don't you make in Battlefield 4 like a um, free-to-play game, like uh, for microtransactions? Yeah. Th th that's one question. Th Okay. Can, you, can you repeat that question louder? Okay. Why do, don't you make Battlefield 4 a free-to-play game with microtransactions? Yeah, so free-to-play games are built on a completely different platform. Uh, Battlefield, uh, the legal, first the legal parts, I'm not really sure about the legal parts, but let's go to the production parts. So we produce a game like Battlefield 4, uh, a lot of millions and millions of dollars go into a product like this. Um, you know for a fact that players are going to play Battlefield. You know for a fact that the revenue that you spend during, um, during, um, during development, you know that the revenue during development is going to match the development or the revenue in sales. So that's an, that's an equal plus minus. So a free-to-play game, first of all, it's, a, it's an EA-wide responsibility. You know, it's, it's their decision. It's not my decision to make. I'm just a producer on the game. Uh, that's for all the 
big profits to make. They decide that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think protecting Battlefield as an IP where people find out, you know, there's so much more to do in Battlefield than in a free-to-play game. Uh, the whole balance. And then, you know, the creative balance as well. It's easier to work on a title like this than a free-to-play title. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, how do you um, see all the statics about how people prefer free-to-play free to games before yeah, buy, buy to play games. Yeah, I've seen that the market has grown, but those numbers haven't hit us. I mean, we still have very, very high numbers in Battlefield, so we aren't really affected by the free to play, free to play thing at all. No. But there is like a one option to fight piracy, right? Well, free to play is one option to fight piracy. Yes, it's not our option to fight piracy. That's why. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Daniel. Thank you for coming. Uh, I have a question. Uh, speak louder. I have a question. Uh, it's about... You have, to, you have to speak louder. It's about moral things. Uh, I, I love Battlefield. I'm a big fan of Battlefield. But, you know, society sometimes uh, blames about the violence in the society uh, for these games. How does your company uh, manage those topics in, in relation... You need, you need to repeat that and speak a little bit louder. Sorry. Uh, society uh, blames uh, the violence, yeah. sometimes the video, the video games violent. So how does your company uh, manage that topic to, to protect uh, about those so, accusations? So making, making video games in general is always, you know, um, it's always controversial to make games where you shoot people in the face. That's, that's how it is. That's how it's always been. Uh, what we make sure that is that we don't depict real world. We, uh, we go for authenticity instead of realism. That's what we do. Uh, because we find it's more important. Making a game is much like making a movie, making a song, making a theatrical play. Uh, you depict fiction. You don't necessarily depict what war is all about. And our game is definitely a game. It's not a simulator. So I think that's, those are the steps we're taking in towards you know, making making sure we're responsible for what's coming out. It's, it's like any media, it's like any war movie coming out. Thank you, Daniel. Hello. Buenas. Eh, mi pregunta es, ustedes tienen juegos que son, eh, por ejemplo, Battlefield Vietnam y Battlefield 2142. Eh, ¿Han pensado alguna vez en, en algún futuro juego de Battlefield eh, pues visitar, pues hacer algo completa, eh, completamente diferente a lo que es eh, pues la guerra moderna? Ya, ya, so we, we've been pretty much everywhere with Battlefield now. We did uh, World War II, we did Sci-Fi with Battlefield 2142. Uh, we did Modern Warfare and Bad Company and now Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Um, you never really know where we're going after this. Not even I know. Uh, I, th I think that's, that's the decision we need to make in the studio where we're going. It's also important when you make a game that you follow the trends that are being popular right now. When we made Battlefield 42, the trend with World War II was huge. Looking at movies, Saving Private Ryan came out. Um, the Sniper in Stalingrad came out, the German movie Stalingrad came out, so all these like different World War II movies started coming out. That kind of hit the, the nail on its head when we came to uh, making this game. Look at how Modern Warfare movies now, you have Hurt Locker, you have, um, you have the different kind of war movies I can't think of right now, Fallujah and those movies, that are kind of depicting what's going on in the world. And it also depends on where the trend is going in the gaming world today. Is it going sci-fi? Then we might think about making sci-fi. If it's not, then we might think of something else. So we'll, we'll see. It's, very, uh, it's a delicate matter because we need to do what applies to mainstream pop culture. Gracias. If I should ask a question yeah? that's very interesting for the gaming industry in Sweden. Why do you think the gaming industry in Sweden are so successful for the moment? A uh, lot, of, lot of talent, a lot of creativity. Uh, in Sweden, we don't really limit creativity. If someone has feedback, if someone has concern on what to do with the game, 
you always invite them to the table and start working with those ideas. We also have a very flat hierarchy. We don't really believe in, we have ti everyone has business titles. We don't really believe in those titles per se because everyone has the equal amount of say. So in Sweden, the best idea wins, not the highest paid person or the highest title. Doesn't really matter, the best idea always wins. Also making games in Sweden, I mean, I grew up in the 90s, uh, was very young in the 90s though, so I can't really remember a lot. But what I can remember is that PC hardware and software was subsidized, so it was very easy for everyone to get a hold of a PC. Uh, internet in Sweden has always been very, very good. I have one gigabit at home in my apartment together with my two cats. Um, so, you know, internet has always been very good, so it's a great way of going forward. So, a lot, the, the big generation that grew up with me, uh, that were young in the 90s, which the game developers are right now, they're about my age, all of them contributed to their time by working on different programs. They started working with mods, they started developing mods and uploading them to the internet. You need good internet speed for that, because that's a lot of data. So, that's how they kind of got started in Sweden. That's the cradle of everything back in the 90s, and now... You know, people are 30 plus, people are almost 40, people are 20, looking at Minecraft, looking at, you know, Candy Crush Saga, looking at Battlefield, they're all huge titles, Syndicate, Massive, and Malmo, huge titles coming out, so it's all layered with creativity, sprinkled with good access to internet, good access to PCs, and everyone, a country that really understands this, and an industry that wants to push this as well. Sorry, my bad, sorry. <laughs> Are we all, oh yeah, go ahead. Buenas. Hello. Otro sistema anti-hacker que no sea pub booster? Alguna vez pensaron, eh, Implementar otro sistema anti-hacker que no sea Pub Booster? Uh, have we ever thought about doing that? Uh, so we've got surprises coming up for Battlefield 4. I can't really reveal that much, but we've learned our lesson from before. And uh, we, are, we are looking at different things. So, yeah. Uh, more information post-launch. Hola. Esta ya es más una pregunta de gustos. Aparte de Battlefield y los juegos de EA, ¿Qué juegos te usan? ¿Cuál es tu favorito aparte de, de los que tú estás? Uh, Counter-Strike. Always. Do you guys like Counter-Strike? Yeah. yeah. It's really good. It's very addictive. Um, yeah, Counter-Strike. I play a lot of GTA. Uh, play some StarCraft. Not very, I'm terrible at StarCraft, though. Terrible. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. I also like you know, single player. I love the, the Walking Dead. Uh, last year when I played it, it was great. Metro Last Light, beautiful game. So a lot of really, really cool games. And also, my favorite game of all time is the Witcher series. Witcher 1 and Witcher 2. Really, really good. And also Counter-Strike, again. Because Counter-Strike is the best game ever made, that's why. So. Hello. Uh, many of the studios and also publishers claim that the cost of producing a video game has increased about 200 or 300 percent in the last 10 years. Did that happen to you? Uh, how do you handle that? Yeah, um, it, it costs a lot to make a AAA game today. Um, Battlefield 4, close to 200 million dollars to make, US dollars. Uh, sorry, Battlefield 3, close to 200 million US dollars. Uh, there was an interview where a marketing exec said it cost $200 million to market. So split even, that's $400 million to just, for the whole package of Battlefield 3. And then you have post-launch things as well. So it's very expensive to make a AAA game. Uh, it shouldn't be that expensive though. If you start out indie, you can make it a lot cheaper. But these are blockbuster games. These are huge titles. The money goes towards, you know, making art assets, paying people, paying the staff, and you know, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very expensive to make games. And I think it's just going to increase. How many questions do we have left? Do we have time for more?
Battlefield 4 de PS3 y Xbox 360 de los de la nueva generación de consolas. ¿Qué diferencia tendría eh, Battlefield 4 de esta generación de consolas con la próxima generación de consolas? ¿Va a haber diferencias o es el mismo juego mejor visto o algo así? Yeah, so what we're having for uh, Xbox 360 and, and how we split up the next gen is that current gen is still going to be Battlefield. You're still going to have all the features of Battlefield inside current gen because that is Battlefield. When you buy the game, you expect certain things and what you expect is what you're going to get. In next gen, we, however, have 64 players, 60 FPS and all the features as well. So we want a unified experience for Battlefield. We don't want to split it up. So all the features are available on all platforms, on all consoles. It's just the player count that changes from 64 players to 60 FPS on next-gen platforms, which is PS4 and Xbox One. Any more questions? Yes, over there. Hola, yo te quiero hacer una pregunta. ¿Nos podrías dar un consejo? Un consejo a todas las personas que estamos relacionadas con toda esta área. O sea, para poder seguir adelante con esto. Yes. Um, my, my biggest advice to you, I spoke to some students from Sina this morning. My biggest advice to you who are making games right now, who are developing things for games, is to make mistakes. That's where you're going to learn from. If you keep making mistakes, you're going to learn how to not make mistakes again. And most, I mean, usually the best ideas come from mistakes as well. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to do something that is unique to you. Make it simple. Make it easy to understand. Make it easy to play. You don't have to make it too complicated. Don't have to add so many buttons. Don't add so many labels. It doesn't make it professional. It just makes it look weird. You don't really know what to do. Make it simple. Make it easy. Make it understandable. That's, uh, those are the biggest, you know, biggest takeaways from, that I can give to you. Um, also, one last thing. You need to learn how to market your game. You need to learn how to talk about your game. You need to learn how do you present your game. Um, if a journalist comes up and... So everyone who's making games right now, think right now. So close your eyes. Imagine this. A journalist walks up to you and says, you have 45 seconds to tell me why I should buy your game. Can you do it? Can you do it within 45 seconds, try to convince this journalist who's so packed with time, who has so many interviews to do, to notice your game and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch this for my consumers, I'm going to pitch this for my players. Can you do it? It's very difficult. I don't even know if I can do it. It's very difficult. You have to grab the attention. You have to focus on what makes your game unique. Why should they play your game? What do they see when they play your game? Those three questions, very, very important to ask whenever you're making a game. Even when you're dreaming about making a game, Always ask those three questions. Yeah? This question is from Twitter. How many players are considered in oath to have servers in Colombia? Uh, I am not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> I don't have all the numbers in my head. Uh, but I'll, I'll put you, uh, if, you, if we talk later, I'll put you in touch with the EA rap here in Colombia. So you can have a talk with him. Uh, but usually it's, it's server infrastructure is very dependent on how many people live in a country. We had, for Back Company 2, we had someone from Trinidad and Tobago who wanted servers. They had three players. Doesn't really work that way. So... And I think we're, uh, do we have time for more questions? Do you know? Does anyone know? All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. I think we're done. It's very hot up here. I'll be, uh, I'll be around. I'm going to go over to the, to the Battlefield game area. I'm going to hang out. So uh, feel free to step forward, say hi. And it's, it's, again, it's a pleasure being in Colombia. Thank you so much for the Swedish Embassy. Thank you so much for organizing this campus party. Thank you all for coming out.